WGN investigates O'Hare Airport's train trouble. When the long-delayed project finally reopened last year, travelers were promised a fast, efficient connection between terminals, parking lots, and the rental car center. But as investigative reporter Ben Bradley tells us, the airport train is still struggling to live up to its promised potential. When temperatures dropped into the single digits in December, so did the reliability of O'Hare's brand new train system. It ground to a halt. We found there have been warning signs about the system for several years now and signs that problems persist. Three days before Christmas on the busiest holiday travel day for Chicago's airports, O'Hare's automated train system broke. It ended up being a full two hours of waiting outside in 17 degree weather. Go waiting. Kristen Fundo was flying home to Memphis after visiting her husband on a work assignment in Saudi Arabia. The train trouble caused her to miss her connecting flight. She couldn't get home for 24 more hours. I'm very confident in saying that I will never fly through O'Hara again. The outage, which spanned three days, stranded thousands of travelers who used the airport train to reach connecting flights, the rental car facility, and remote parking lots. It was like lottery ticket or something kind of mode, trying to figure out who was going to win to get on the bus to get where we're going. The Chicago Department of Aviation, stung by years of delays on the project, failed to notify the press or the public about the outage, even as it got worse. WGN Investigates reviewed records that show the first internal alert that the trains were down circulated on Thursday, December 22nd at 2.47 p.m. Two hours later, an airport customer service rep wrote to bosses, I'm getting reports that the buses are taking an hour to get to passengers. Do we have an update on busing operations? Thank you, straight ahead this way. Indeed, travelers were stranded as the airport struggled to find buses to transport them. That night, airport managers were told, as the temperatures fall, we are having difficulty getting trains to move. There were brakes fail to release alarms, door alarms, and battery faults. All of it ongoing, all of it stopped the trains from going and stopped passengers in their tracks. Most of the people who fly to O'Hare are not coming to Chicago. They're coming through Chicago. So as a major connecting hub, if you move one chess piece, you lose the whole board. Snow and cold canceled flights that week, but the train trouble made the problem worse. And we've learned the airport's automated train system has been unexpectedly out of service 17 times in the 10 months since it fully reopened. Perhaps it shouldn't be a surprise. Here's what we reported about a 2021 incident. After a few weeks of snow and ice in February, the airport consultant wrote to the contractor, vehicle reliability has degraded to essentially zero and that the overall project is simply regressing as a result of the increased vehicle problems. Clearly, some issues were fixed because last April, the system resumed round-the-clock operation. An airport spokesperson says they're working to maintain a high level of reliability, especially during winter weather. Here's travel expert Peter Greenberg's take. Anytime you're dealing with new technology, you're going to have problems. You have to have enough time to test it. You have to be able to take them to failure, to be able to know exactly how to make them certifiable that's safe. Now, you're doing that at the same time that you're operating an airport. And when you put those two together, just get out your multiplication tables because that's how long it's going to take to get it done. It wasn't supposed to be like this. One, two, three. All right. When former mayor Rahm Emanuel's administration started the project, the promise was it would be completed by the end of 2018, while the trains, for the most part, continued to run. That deadline came and went, and in January 2019, the system was completely shut down. For nearly three more years, passengers were bused between terminals and parking lots at a cost of more than $80 million. Despite the severe winter weather that crippled the trains in December, WGN Investigates has learned problems persist. A little more than a month ago, airport officials notified the contractor recurring vehicle faults continue to adversely affect fleet reliability. I am really in awe. It is stunning and beautiful. All of this against the backdrop of an even bigger project now underway at O'Hare, the eight 
billion dollar construction of a new international terminal and other improvements. Experts say travelers should buckle up for a potentially bumpy ride. Look at LaGuardia. You know, they decided they're going to redo LaGuardia without closing it, right? I mean, it was not fun, right, for anybody. It will be great, but not when they say it is. <laughs> or for the amount they say it is. It never is. The irony of all this is on the very same December day the trains stopped working, the Department of Aviation signed off that the project was substantially complete, triggering the final payment to the contractors. Total due, $333 million. A spokesperson for the lead contractor, Parsons, says the company is working with the city, but its role does not include actually operating the train system. Airport officials declined to talk to us on camera, citing ongoing mediation, a sign that the airport train's next stop could be a courtroom. Ben Bradley, WGN Investigates. Doesn't sound like it's going to be no, fixed anytime soon. No.